I know, I know, I know. I missed two weeks of uploads. Mm, uh, sorry, I guess. But I can't explain that. been in Denmark with my family. Vacation, you know? But now I'm back and in today's video we are taking a look at the new Premiere Pro version. Hello and welcome here on Random Rotation. I hope you're all doing well. I don't want to waste too much of your time, so let's jump directly into Premiere. First off, just to get it out of the way, the cloud-based collaboration tool Frame.io is now included in Premiere and After Effects. The reason why I only want to mention this fairly quickly is that I think Frame.io is worth a whole video on its own and I don't want this one to become longer than it needs to be. Also, I don't think it's interesting for everybody because not all of us work in teams and Frame.io starts where the one person does it all thing Ends. So let me know in the comments if you are interested in a more in-depth video about Frame.io and I create one. But now to the things every Premiere user can make good use of. Adobe redesigned the process of creating new projects. Once you click on new project, this is what you see. Just like in the old days, we can first give our project a name and we do this in the top left corner. I call mine then mark and this is my project's location, the path where Premiere stores all the project data. I could choose a different location if this would not be right, but like I said, it is. And now the new file browser comes into play. I created a folder on my desktop conveniently named Denmark. And here I can scrub through the individual clips to see if they really fit my needs and then I can choose the ones that I really want to use. Let's say this one and this one. Next I can give the sequence that's being created in just a second a name. Denmark underscore version 01 and I can create a new bin for my footage, whoop, <laughs> footage, sorry, create, boom. Here we have the footage folder that we just created with all the footage in it and the Denmark version 01 sequence. Cool, right? And if I now choose to import some more footage into this project, I could either do it the old fashioned way and just drag and drop some new clips into this footage folder or some music into this project, or I can simply jump back into import and do it this way. Both works pretty fine. But if you're doing it from within this import tab, just make sure to uncheck new bin and create new sequence because otherwise you're creating new bins with the name footage every time you import new footage and that's simply not helpful at all. Now let's talk about the new header bar design. You might have noticed that something has changed over here as well. On the left we have a home button, the import tab that we just worked with, an edit tab we're in right now and an export tab we talk about in just a second but by default all the other tabs like audio color blah 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 seem to be gone don't panic a click on workspaces reveals them all and I could jump from editing into audio let's say and back again just like this or if I like the one-click solution, I can show my workspace tabs. 
drag this guy out and there they are. And even better, I can edit the workspaces and let's say learning, do not show, uh, meta logging, do not show. I never use all panels, do not show. Um, the audio tab, I use it more often than the effects tab. Uh, the libraries do not show, uh, production do not show. Yeah, fine. Okay. And now this is my custom layout. I like this. And from here, let's now jump into the color workspace because something has changed over here. In the Lumetri color panel, we can now, let me drag it out. We can now click on the auto color button. And I know there was an automatic function before, but this one seems to work a little bit better. It works with this Adobe Sensei whatever thingy. And the results, if you ask me, do look better than what we're used to with the old automatic color correction tool. We also have an intensity slider, but that slider gets grayed out once we dial in some custom values. Moving on to the export tab that just like the import workspace has changed quite a lot. It is all still here. Every functionality, every parameter that we're used to is still in here. It's just presented in a different, in an easier way, in my opinion. On the left here, we have all the presets that Premiere now comes with. I, for example, like to export my videos for YouTube and right next to it, I can now check the settings and make changes if necessary. And from here, I can simply export or send it to the media encoder to render in the background and work with Premiere on something different, just like we're used to. And I can publish directly to the platform, to YouTube in this instance. If I have more than one channel, I can select them from this drop-down menu. And you see, I haven't signed into my channel right now, but I'm pretty sure I will check this out. Just one thing you really have to be aware of, the privacy settings. By default, it's set to private, and I think that's the way it should be. Otherwise, <laughs> it's out in the wild before you know it. And that sums it up. These are the changes in Premiere Pro version 22. What old users might call a not really necessary facelift is a pretty smart decision, I think. It is a more modern design, a more streamlined workflow, if you will. And I think that new users will have less and less and less barriers with every Premiere iteration to get going to to jump into their first projects and to start editing without having to think about import settings export settings too much and I, I i really believe that that's a smart step to take for a company like adobe and that my friends is it for this week i really hope you liked it and if so Thank you very much. I see you in the next video. And until then, stay safe and motivated. Bye for now.